OK, now let's get to a landmark moment for a professional footballer suffering from the effects of brain injuries and dementia. The PFA and the Premier League have announced the creation of a new fund with £1 million immediately being pledged to provide help for families. It follows the exclusive story we brought you in April. However, the FA and EFL are now not contributing to the fund. And let's get more on this. Our senior reporter, Rob Dorset joins me now. Rob, before we speak about the FA and the EFL and their involvement or not in this, just tell us how significant a moment is this? Joe, this is really significant news. Uh, as you mentioned there, we, uh, we told you exclusively at the end of April that a deal was close on this really important issue. I think the fact that it's taken four months since we broke that story for today's announcement tells you just how sensitive and, and complex uh, the issues are around this subject. All of the football authorities, the Premier League, the FA, the EFL and the PFA, have been in detailed discussions for many years on the subject of dementia and neurodegenerative diseases uh, for ex-footballers. And the Brain Health Fund today that's now been set up in the by the Premier League and the PFA does not include the FA and the EFA. We'll go into more explanation about that in due course. Um, but the Premier League and the PFA, I understand, felt there couldn't be any more delays. There were so many people with urgent need here that they needed to get this fund in place as quickly as possible. That's why they've come up with this immediate £1 million and they've started the process, if you like. And that's to help people like Bill Gates, who we went to film with in Middlesbrough, a former Middlesbrough player, uh, back in April. Um, he's in the latter stages of dementia now. He needs 24-hour care. And when we went to see Bill, and even now, he's quite peaceful. But his family told us some pretty horrific stories about his journey through uh, the illness, which I'll tell you about now, but I warn our viewers, some people may find it offensive. Uh, his wife, Judith, told us that she remembers the day when his body was all twisted because he'd walked and walked and walked himself to the point of exhaustion and the family couldn't stop him. Uh, she told us about the fact that he was trying to scratch contact lenses out of his eyes that weren't there. He hasn't worn contact lenses since he did back in the 60s. And she had to physically hold his hands to stop him from continually scratching at his eyes. So these are horrific stories. They're terrible illnesses that go on behind closed curtains very often. Um, but there is a, a, an awful lot of players and ex-players and families that are severely affected by dementia and this is a big step by the Premier League and the PFA to try and help with that with the announcement of this brain health fund today. Yeah absolutely Robin I mean you're saying it's a big step we've mentioned that one million pound pledge is that enough? No, it's not. It's a big amount of money and it's a great start, I think, is the way most campaigners would respond to that. Um, it's very, very welcome because there's an important principle here, which is that the, the families of, of people suffering from this illness feel that football needs to take its share of responsibility for the fact that ex-players, some ex-players do have dementia. And as we talk to you now, we think there are currently around 80 former players uh, in England currently with neurodegenerative illnesses of some type. And residential care, the specialist residential care, costs between £60,000 and £80,000 a year for one individual. So if you times 80000 by 80 individuals, it costs £6.4 million for the residential care of those 80 former players for just one year's worth of care. So that puts it into perspective just how big this bill could be. Um, so this initial fund is going to be really important. It's going to get help to those families very, very quickly. That's why the Premier League and the PFA wanted to move so quickly. The issue of the longer-term care and funding of those players with, uh, with uh, neurodegenerative diseases, I think there's more discussions to have in that, to that end. And finally then, Rob, we have touched on it already, but yeah, the FA and EFL not contributing to this fund. Just, just tell us why. Well, my understanding is that the FA has been very much part of this process and in discussions with the Premier League and, and the PFA, but it feels that at the moment, and, and that's a key phrase, at the moment, it's better that it invests and continues to invest in research and education into the possible links between dementia and football. Um, the EFL have told us that they're still working with other football authorities to set up a charity and make this a charitable status 
uh, for the fund going forward. And they point out they've got extensive research and education programmes of their own and they legislate. They've put regulations in place to try and make football safer. I think what's significant for the FA as well is, my understanding is, there's a number of litigation cases against them. They're being sued by a number of families who, of, of ex-players with dementia. And so it's been suggested to me that if they were to contribute to this fund openly, uh, that may be seen in legal terms as a potential admission of liability, which could open the floodgates for claims against them. So this is why it's very complicated legally and ethically for the FA and all of the football authorities uh, involved. Um, but let's show you what Maheta Malongo, the, uh, the chief executive of the PFA, has said today, because I think this is significant in, in, in some of the undertone here. He said to us, this is an important step forward in the way football provides practical support to former players who develop dementia and other neurodegenerative conditions. It's an issue where, in all areas, we continue to believe there needs to be a football-wide responsibility. That includes providing access to financial support for former players and the families who most need it. The Premier League deserve credit for the proactive way in which they have approached these discussions. Listen to this last bit. Obviously, we hope that other stakeholders in the game will choose to contribute to the fund going forward. That, to me, seems a pretty pointed comment towards the EFL and the FA from the PFA. Um, and those politics, those discussions are going to go on in the background. But let's focus on the huge positive today and the landmark change that has happened. This is the first time we've seen a specific independently run fund to try and help ex-footballers uh, with dementia. It's a big, big, a big, big move, a big, big step. Um, uh, but there are bigger issues going forward as well. As one football official told me in April, April this, all, this is the single biggest issue for football going forward. It is already a financial crisis. It could become a medical one too if urgent action isn't taken. Well, there is some action that's being taken. It started with the Premier League and the PFA today. Rob, thank you very much for now.